Our study shows that necrotizing autoimmune myopathies carries a high risk of cardiorespiratory complications. Therefore, an early close assessment of the cardiorespiratory status is crucial in this disease to optimize patient care. My name is Margarita Milone. I'm a neuromuscular specialist and professor of neurology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The study I refer to is summarized in the article titled Cardiac and the Respiratory Complications of Necrotizing Autoimmune Myopathies. It is expected to be printed in the October 2020 Mayo Clinic Proceeding Issue. The article, however, is already online on the journal website. The study is the result of a joint effort of a group of physicians with expertise in neuromuscular diseases, neuroimmunology, cardiology, with a large contribution from a former neuromuscular fellow, Dr. James Triplett. Here, we have had the opportunity and privilege of caring of a high number of patients with necrotizing autoimmune myopathy. This disease is a treatable muscle disease causing weakness and sometimes associated with antibodies directed against HMGCR or SRP. We reviewed retrospectively the cardiac and the respiratory findings of more than 100 patients with necrotizing autoimmune myopathies. It correlated these findings with the patient antibody status. We found that the large majority of patients with this disease have cardiac involvement and of interest, more than 50% of them had no preceding history of a cardiac disease. The most common electrocardiographic abnormalities were conduction block and the prolonged QT, with the former being more frequent in the patient with HMGCR antibodies and the latter being more frequent in the subject with SRP antibodies. In regard to echocardiographic abnormalities, the most frequent abnormal finding was a diastolic dysfunction, followed by systolic dysfunction and the compromised ejection fraction. The echocardiographic abnormalities improved after immunotherapy in more than 50% of patients who had follow-up studies. In regard to respiratory involvement, approximately 80% of our patients had a restrictive pattern on pulmonary function test. And in some of them, mechanical ventilation or non-invasive ventilatory support was requested. The respiratory involvement was more frequent in the patients without antibodies. While the degree of respiratory complications correlated with the degree of skeletal muscle weakness, the abnormal cardiac findings did not. Our study essentially showed unambiguously that there is a high risk of respiratory and cardiac involvement and therefore a formal evaluation of the cardiorespiratory status in this disease is important to guarantee early treatment. Now, if we consider that the cardiac complications have been associated with morbidity and mortality in other forms of autoimmune muscle diseases different than necrotizing autoimmune myopathy, we predict that our study will prompt the physician to assess early the cardiorespiratory status in patients with a necrotizing myopathy, and this in, ter in turn will result in improved outcome for the patients. The limitation of our study was the retrospective nature of it. Therefore, prospective studies with a more uniform assessment would be important to better understand the spectrum of cardiac and respiratory abnormalities. For example, the use of a cardiac MRI in patients with abnormal electrocardiographic and echocardiographic findings could be relevant to further dissect the primary involvement of the myocardium in this disease. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. 
Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.